All right, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And you know, we're gonna bring a little bit of woods and waters in for you tonight. We are talking duck hunting. I know it's a little bit premature, but you need to be getting ready for duck season because I think we're gonna have a grand, grand year this year. And I, I you know, I didn't feel good about last year, so I didn't say it. So <laughs> we didn't have a great year last year. So I didn't say it, but I think this year we are gonna have a great, great year. Uh, I've been out there in the woods, Joe and I both have been scouting around. There's a lot of acorns out there. So there's a lot of mass crops. Uh, that's going on as far as the trees are concerned and when those fields get flooded and those woods get flooded you're gonna see a lot more ducks out there eating those acorns so the deer better hurry up the competition's growing stiffer and stiffer but we're gonna broaden out and introduce our guest to you tonight we have one of the great duck hunters of all of Middle Tennessee and West Tennessee and that is Mr. Mark Arnold and Mark owns Quest Outdoors which makes Duck decoys of all things. You'd think he wouldn't he wouldn't do this as a business, but he's like me. He just enjoyed it so much you made a business out of it, Mark. Yes, I did, Hugh, and be frank with you, this show is more timely than you think because our duck season, early season, starts day after tomorrow. Saturday. Saturday. Now they can take wood ducks up to two. Yep. And, and teal, up, right? Up to four teals. Up to four teals. But no more than four ducks altogether. No more than four ducks altogether. That's right. right. So that starts Saturday morning, uh, bright and early. So we hope to get a lot. And a lot of people are gearing up for it. They're, they want to get duck hunting. Absolutely. It's a good warm up and it's a, always a refreshing thing because. And it's it, not going to be so hot. Yeah, exactly. We actually have a little bit of cold front coming through tomorrow, and quite frankly, it might actually push new ducks in for Saturday morning. So I think I, I'm very excited about it. Uh, well, you, as you should be. And, and along with the, over here, this is kinfolk of mine. This is Mr. Don Farrell. And Don flew all the way in from Dallas just to be on this show, and I appreciate that. You bet. <laughs> I tried to get him to buy the dinner, but no, we weren't having that. <laughs> but Don, thank you so much for being on here you with bet. us. Now, now you are married to Joy, my wife's first cousin. That's correct. Yes. So that means you and I have honeydew lists that look like Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> Because let me tell you something about those McMurtry girls. <laughs> they can come up with a list of things to do. <laughs> yes, they can. Yes, they can. Well, Don, we appreciate you being here also. And tonight, no, we're going to talk about duck hunting as far as the decoy. Now, we're not going to say uh, where you should hunt or the strategies there, but we are going to talk about strategies of your duck decoys. And we got a short little five minute segment we're going to show you here in a little bit. Uh, three and a half to five minutes about how to place decoys and how to how to use decoys to your advantage. Now, what Mark does make, however, is motorized motorized. I'll get it right. Motorized decoys, yes. and not just ducks either. No, no. We also make t a dove and a crow decoy, and we've got a turkey decoy coming out, and a lot of other things. Very exciting stuff coming to you. I am telling you, I am more excited now. And everybody knows I am not a professed to be duck hunter. I've only been duck hunting twice in my life, and neither time did I come home with a duck. But, <laughs> but now turkey hunting. Now you're talking my kind of language there, and you do have. I'm excited about this new turkey decoy that you have that's motorized that's going to be coming out and you even have a big disclaimer on this that says make sure where you're hunting yeah <laughs> they, they, there's a lot of states that uh, hunting with a motorized or electronic turkey right. decoy is illegal right uh follow your state's rules that's all i can say you know it's not illegal for me to sell it to you but it is illegal to use it in some states in some states and yeah. and, and, and two uh, if you're hunting public land with one of these, somebody could mis mistake you for the real thing. Yes, I mean, you need to know where you're hunting and your right. surrounding and who's in the woods with you. And if you're in public property, you need to be extremely careful. Now, is there a limit, Mark, on the amount of motor motorized decoys that you can have in your spread here in Tennessee? Absolutely zero. Not, there is no limitation at all. Okay, so 
you, you know, I told you, Billy Blakely, and my, my buddies up there at Blue Bank Resort and on Real Foot, you know, they put out three and 400 decoys in front of their blinds. And you said, they'd only use that many? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's very typical for a lot of real foot hunters to use as many as 800, 1,000, 1,200 decoys. Goodness. Uh, now, on Kentucky Lake, where I normally hunt, which is, we call it the homeland. It's our homeland. It's where we go on a daily basis. Right. We use anywhere from three to 600 decoys. Goodness gracious. That's a lot for Kentucky Lake, too. Well, yes, it is, but uh, we're very successful, and we know how to do, make it happen, and that's one of the things that does make it happen. No, all right, let, let's pick your brain just a little bit here. Uh, getting started now in the, in the duck season. Um, if you've got 300 decoys and you're putting them out there in a spread in front of you, how many motorized do you think you should have? Is there like a, a, a rule of thumb for one for every 50 or one for every 100 or – well, is there a rule? There's not a rule. Um, a lot of folks are trying to minimize the number of motion decoys that they're putting out because they're afraid that a lot of ducks are getting extremely used to them and maybe even flare off of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that with the Mallard Master Pro and the Feeding Frenzy and the Aviator 3D, which I make, right, there is no effect on using less and it's extremely better to use more. Well, it, wouldn't it look, to me now, uh, you're just mimicking nature. Exactly true, and uh, that's what I say about these decoys. They're as real as you get. Well, now, I'm going to be honest with you. I have read articles about guys put, saying, you know, well, I think motorized decoys are hurting us because uh, uh, I've seen some come in and flare. But, you know, I watch videos. I also read a lot. I've heard guys say they didn't know why those ducks flared. They didn't have any motorized. They came in, they flared, they were gone, never got a shot. Uh, so it, it kind of like is they didn't see, they saw something they didn't, wasn't quite sure about. And that could happen anywhere. Well, I mean, any way you look at it, when a duck gets close enough, he's going to tell something ain't right. When right. he gets close enough, he he's smart enough and he's been educated enough now to this point that he knows. It wouldn't now, be those four heads popping up out of the grass <laughs> with guns, would it? The, 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 the goal is to shoot them dead and leave no witnesses. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, so the, the subject of this the whole show is if it flies, it dies, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's. But, but now, you know, talking about the duck season, Tennessee really hasn't had a good season in the last, I would say, four or five years. Just listening to duck hunters, they keep thinking that the, and now am I saying it right? The western fly zone or the or the flyway, the Mississippi flyway is what I'm trying to right, say. Right, right. Is moving west. There may be some truth to that. I'm not a biologist, and I can't really vouch for what is actually happening, but mm -hmm. a lot of guys are feeling like that we are losing a portion of our flyway. Okay. And it's very easy to feel that way because Delta Waterfowl mm -hmm. and Ducks Unlimited have done an extremely good job at providing habitat. Right. Now, that's not habitat just in Tennessee. That's habitat from here all the way into Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah. So... What that has done is that has spread out the population of ducks a little bit more than what it used to be. They're not quite as confined. They're not as quite as confined, and a few, maybe even a few less, even migrate to Tennessee and further south. Okay, that may very well be true. I think they all actually do migrate at least as much as most of them do anyway. All there right. may be a few. All right, we're going to hold that thought. we got to take our first break, visit some of our fine, fine sponsors out there that help make this show possible for you each and every week. So hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Water. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. All right, this week's Picture of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Let me tell you something, September 1st, Kentucky deer season's already opened, and Flowers is gearing up to take care of your big furry animal that you take care of this year. 
and we hope you have great, great success. Uh, start off with picture number one and number two. This is from my good friend Randall Staggs down there with my blend deer minerals. I can't push this stuff enough for you guys and gals out there that love to see this, but look at the racks on these bucks. These bucks are not Kentucky deer. They're not even Middle Tennessee deer. These deer are from South Tennessee, and there is some nice 10 and 11 pointers there that you're looking at with some big, big mass to them. So great, great job there. For, that's uh, a couple of great pictures. And Nathan Hutcherson of Clarksville, Tennessee sent me this in. He said, Hugh, I got a limit of three rats on opening day. And I got them cleaned and headed to grandma's for some squirrel and dumplings. And I tell you what, it doesn't get much better than that, boys. <laughs> it's nothing like squirrel dumplings. Hey, you can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at Hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here fast. We got a lot of, lot of uh, more photographs coming in right now. Um, gotta tell a short little story. My look, Buddy, you've seen him on here before, Ralph Riley with Juiced Up Baits. Uh, Ralph lives in Kentucky. He went uh, Sunday, and he went with some buddies of his, went deer hunting, bow hunting Sunday, and well, he took a huge doe. He said, I've already started filling my freezer, but all the guys were laughing at him because you know what temperature it was on Sunday? It was 92 <laughs> degrees. And he was out there in a the t-shirt, camo pants, and flip-flops. <laughs> so, for all you guys that don't believe in hunting downwind, you need to hunt downwind when Ralph's around. <laughs> so, Ralph was wearing flip-flops, so that's a new one on deer hunting records right there, as far as I know. But I want to get back to talking about ducks now, because we do have our duck season, which is our early duck season. It's for wood ducks and teal. It opens up Saturday morning, so this Saturday morning. So that's going to be a great, great time. Uh, as we were talking about, some people are saying that the flyway is moving west of the Mississippi. And, and you, what you're telling me makes more sense than anything because Ducks Unlimited, Delta Waterfowl, and there's a few others. You know, even like Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, they buy land or land is donated to them to manage and they manage it for all everything ducks dove quail deer turkey all of the everything that's out there so if more states are doing that which i know they are uh you can you can spread out a, a big flock of of ducks uh duck duck hunters or all hunters in general spend a lot of money for licenses and, oh, and yeah. you know taxes and so forth now this money is diverted in helping preserve wildlife mm -hmm. i mean that's one of the key purposes of that money and the use that is and, and it's from a state to state basis You're right and they use those funds to provide hunting and provide habitat and, and help the wildlife and uh every state has got that money available and they spend so much money and they're trying to develop and keep their home state in a better shape oh yeah and provide the habitat for the wildlife mm -hmm. now you know like you said you, you you've heard people say well you think our flyways moving west well you talk to the guys in the west where you're talking about now i'm going to focus on primarily canada goose hunters okay right where where they would normally see masses of 50, 60, 100,000 geese. They're not seeing that anymore there either. They're seeing 5,000, 8,000, 10,000. I'm telling them where the remaining balance is. It's in Hendersonville, well, Tennessee. I, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. my point is mm. the habitat has gotten so great yeah. by the federal and the state and the nonprofits like DU and Delta uh, that these geese are scattered out because they have more places to habitat to live and you know eat and and spend winter do you think though and and, and i made a uh jest of it but i'm actually telling the truth places like hendersonville tennessee in old hickory on old hickory lake uh there is more resident geese every year that stay it seems like well we started off with a hundred of them now we got 200 now there's a thousand now there's five thousand resident geese here i'm going to tell you the problem with that you 
they're becoming more like Mark Arnold. They're getting lazy. <laughs> they don't want to fly north. <laughs> I noticed them out there with the other geese are going north or going south. They just sit there and wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the geese population especially. That, now, geese are kind of what, if I understand this right, according to the uh, Ducks Unlimited and Delta Waterfowl, geese are kind of the, what we think of as like turtles are to fish. They're kind of a, a a signature, or if there's a lot of turtles in there, then you know there's a lot of fish in there. If there's a lot of geese around, then you know it's going to be great for ducks. Uh, so the it's kind of a what I call a temperature gauge. You know, it kind of it, it's tempting the water there and letting them know. But I still believe that we have a lack of food plots. And, and what I mean by food plots, we have a lack of corn, grains, soybeans, stuff like that, that are actually flooded to where these ducks and everything can get to them. Now that's not the case in places like Missouri and Texas. They do it on purpose there. Yes. Rice patties, we talked about rice patties before the before the show started. Rice patties see, it congregate a lot of ducks during the, during the season because they flood the fields. But how can we as landowners and, and all that, as serious duck owners, and I know you are. Right. What, what do you do that you kind of attract ducks to you? Well, in Tennessee, like you say, the actual farming is not as great as it is in some areas like, right. say, Illinois, like you said, Missouri, right. Texas, etc. That is not one. Uh, Tennessee is, is no longer a big agricultural agricultural state, state. Mm -hmm. now there are areas that are and you know our advantage our offset to help provide for the wildlife now are, is mainly our federal refuges that's right and our wmas that they plan and provide food for these animals mm -hmm. to live in winter on uh, a lot of folks don't like the fact that they're feeding animals on the federal refuges where no one can hunt them well, the point is, in the state of Tennessee, without that food being provided for these animals, that that migration may be moving further west. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. With that, we've got a short film. We promised that we were going to watch it. Now's the time. We're going to let uh, Andrew, uh, is going to just view it, and we're going to talk over it, Mark, okay? We're going to be talking over it. But this is a uh, uh, this is typical duck hunters here <laughs> before daylight. <laughs> yep. Now here, talk. Tell us a little bit. Where are you? Well, this particular shot is in Canada, and we're hunting in Man in uh, Saskatchewan. And this is the opening morning, and we have a very good day. Now these are just shots that I use to tell you what you can do with the decoys that I produce. Right. And this is that evidence. There's a motorized decoy right there uh, in front of that one. This, this is evidence of the hunts that we have been on and stuff that we have filmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, very exciting stuff. I mean, I love this. I mean, uh, this is what I do. Now, this is the Matter Master Pro. Now, the Matter Master Pro, as you see, is on the water. As the wings spin, they slap the water propelling it, and it swims in a circular motion. Okay. Now, one of the main things about the Mylar Master Pro is that it has the on-off timer. That's what makes this decoy more realistic than most others. Yeah, it's it not does constant. delay. It does delay. Mm-hmm. And now you've got now this one is it on a track or a <laughs> table that keeps it round going round? And no, round? no, you anchor it like a regular decoy. That's what I wanted to bring out. Yeah, you're yeah. anchoring it just like a regular decoy. Just like a regular decoy, you put okay. a little barrel swivel in line, like you know about right. your fishing barrel That's swivel. Right. Too odd is a good one to That's use. That's a good one. And it keeps that line from twisting up. Y'all were letting these ducks land on you. <laughs> <laughs> we were using two and three quarter inch six shot to kill those ducks on that particular day. Can you believe this? Yep. This is awesome. All right, now the aviator. This is the full body version of one of our decoys that we make. Now you can see that <clears throat> it's not just on that stake motionless. The entire body of that decoy is moving, pivoting, yeah. rocking up and down, yeah. and spinning. And of course, the wings are on and off. And, and it's mimicking one that's fixing to land on the water or, or one is just taking off. But yes. It's, it's okay. 
now this decoy, the, the aviator, now will run all day on three AA batteries. That's awesome. Now we've got the, the feeding ducks. Yes, now this feeding frenzy is, is a decoy that I came out with for Arkansas when they banned spinning wings. Okay. We got this to be able to be used in the state of Arkansas during their ban. Oh, okay. And I have, uh, that is, a, of course, it's good for anywhere. Right, but right. I, But I designed that for Arkansas. And, and when you use a feeding frenzy, <laughs> now, of course, uh, ducks are, are like everything else. They're, they want to eat. Uh, and now this is the Mallard Master Mini. Yes. This, this is, is a smaller version of the, of the first one we saw. Right, and it doesn't have the delay timer, so the wings are spinning constant. As you see, that decoy really swims hard and fast. It does. And it puts out a lot of ripple. Now, that you asked a question earlier. How many do you need? Yeah. That one decoy will put the ripples through four or five dozen decoys. There you go. See, that's what I wanted to know is... Would you get uh, more of the Ballard Master Minis, or would you get more? You tell. I mean, you've duck on it way longer than I have. Uh, but so, which one would you get the most of? Would you? Does it matter as to where you're going? Yes, that that where you're hunting it makes a big deal. I mean, you, you know, you got to evaluate your situation and your need. Okay. Now, if you're in a bottomland. Let's say where you're not going to be have a lot of wind, a lot right. of trees, flooded timber. Uh, you want something to move the water, right? And the more motion, water motion you get, the better off you are. Okay. The Mallard Master Pro on the water, the Mini on the water, the the that's going to give you lots of motion. And the feeding frenzy. Okay. Now the feeding frenzy probably actually puts out more ripples than the, the other two combined. All right, I'll tell you what, we got to hold on to those thoughts because we're going to talk to, we're going to pick his brain. We're not through with him yet, okay? So we're going to pick some more of it here, but we got to go to our new product of the week. This week's product of the week is being brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center. We sell tires for the way you drive. I'll be, I'll be right, carrying a lot more right. ammunition. We got, <laughs> we're gonna, we got our new product of the week this week, and, and let me tell you something. I am so proud of this one here. We've, we've had Terry Hobbs on here before. Stand up jigs. I want you to take a look at what he's come up with now. This is not only a stand up jig where you do shaky head. This is an actual jig now. And we've got some great action on this thing. As you can tell, it stands straight up. You can put it with a, a, a crawl, some type of crawl, whatever you want to on the back, a beaver type bait, whatever, that'll, that'll mimic a crawfish. But look back here at the back. This is what I really want you to see. This has a seven millimeter rattle back here in the back and it fits inside of a pocket little black pocket you can take this rattle out if you want to go with it silent or you can put the rattle in when you need one to rattle and make noise but the great thing about it that i like about it is you can flip it over and it has a little hole right up here in the front and my good friend ralph riley with juiced up baits you can take that juiced up baits and it actually fits this little hole but you can put crawfish gel inside this rattle or by the rattle and every time you throw in this jig now it not only rattles but it's also putting out a scent trail for you and so great great fishing idea go to standupjigs.com standupjig.com and pick you up some of these you're not going to want to go fishing without them hey we got to take a break when we come back we're going to open up phone lines for you so be ready to call us here we'll answer your questions hurry back to more southern woods and waters this segment is being brought to you by fate sanders marina come by and check out the jewel of percy priest lake This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right. A lot of fine folks out there that work for TWRA, and we appreciate them each and every one every day of hunting season and fishing season, which covers the whole year. <laughs> so, so we really appreciate Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. They do a thankless job many, many times. 
uh, over. And so uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you. But uh, hey, we want to talk. We open up the phone lines, of course, 737-7767. Call us with any kind of question you might have. We'll try to answer. Uh, preferably, we'd like to talk to about duck hunting decoys and situations that we use there. But if we don't know the answer, Don says he knows the answer yeah. to everything. So, <laughs> so hey, we got we got Chris. Chris, how can we help you tonight? Steve. Yes, sir. It's Chris Snow. How are you, buddy? Chris Snow, let me tell you about this rotten scoundrel. <laughs> oh. This boy's been wearing out spotted bass on Center Hill. Am I right? Man, my arms are so sore right now. <laughs> <laughs> I caught 23 today, and they were just uh, big ones. How do you handle them? Hey, that? how are you catching them, Chris? Let us know. Uh, early in the morning, there have been uh, topwater bites have been awesome. First couple hours of the morning, it's been awesome. Uh, I caught four keeping smallmouth early this morning. And uh, later on in the day, I've been finding them out on points to schooled up. And, I mean, they're, they're just three- and four-pound pigs. Now, see, that's what it's all about. Now, and, and now Chris, we're going. you stay with them because you and I and Joy, we're going back after those rascals, okay? We'll get them, buddy. We'll get them. But now, what are you using, Chris? If you if if you can tell us, let our audience know how they can go catch some of those big spots at Center Hill. Uh, first of all, you got to have the right electronics. But uh, and then uh, I've been using a drop shot. I've been dropping them. I basically I've been watching every one of them bite it. <laughs> Goodness. It, it uh, I've been finding them schooled out. Scoot up out, out on these long tapering points, and uh, uh, it's amazing this time of the year. Uh, I, I've never caught them this big, uh, this quick. Uh, usually, usually you have to catch them uh, in the winter time. Oh yeah, but uh, uh, it, it, it it's pretty amazing bite right now. I've been on them now for two weeks, and. Uh, I'm going back for some more in the morning. I heard that. Well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing that with our audience, too. And and uh, you stay with them now because uh, Joe and I will be coming to see you real soon. No problem. See you later. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. Chris Snow, the snow spinner. And we have Bobby. Bobby, how can we help you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm... I've got a decoy uh, question, but uh, yeah. I'm a turkey hunter, and I put out a decoy, and the coyotes come running out and tear them <laughs> down, and I can't <laughs> shoot them early, early in the morning. Uh, They'll be seven the next morning chasing them out of the field. I need to know it, uh, what the limit on a uh, gun you can use to kill them this time of the year. Uh, there is no limit on, on coyotes. It's, I'll be a uh, 25 off six. Yep, you can use it. Okay, I'm going in the morning because i got to send them out or I'm going to quit turkey. <laughs> well, I, t I tell you what, uh, uh, you know, turkey's, uh, he's right. There is getting to be a lot of coyotes in Tennessee. They oh, seven yeah. in a pack over there, and I go over there and hunt, and, and then they come over and run the turkey out of them, and it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're not the only one that's experiencing that. There's a lot of us out there experiencing that. I wish they'd that. put a bounty on them, and then I'd turn in my bounty to get <laughs> back to the game and fish, back to game and fish when I kill one. I heard that, buddy. I tell you what, Bobby, you, you got the same sentiments as a bunch of us. But okay. I, I, I tell you what, Need you can go. Out, thank you very much. You can go out there and hunt them any time right now. I mean, it's uh, coyotes are, are open year-round. And you can use center fires. And, uh, you know, the great thing is is I, we use coyote hunting as a as a way to get ready for deer season and stuff. Well, you know, I haven't come out with a spinning tail uh, coyote decoy <laughs> yet, but I'll think about that. You know? But you do have a predator. I mean, you have you have that wobble uh, no, for no. the prairie. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, prairie dog? Or? Yeah, but that is not really mine. It's somebody else's. I was, I was advertising for them. Oh, okay, okay, but, okay. Yeah, there, right. that is out there, the prairie dog. Yeah, yes. it's the prairie dog. All right, yes. and we have uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, how can we help you? Uh, yes, I'm a young man. I was going to be fishing in uh, Old Hickory in the next couple of weeks. I was wondering if y'all had any tips for me to use up there. I've never fished there before. Yes, sir. I tell you what, we're going to hang out with you and we're going to answer your question for you, Isaiah. Isaiah, what I showed is the new product of the week is one that I think that you really need to be uh, on right now. Um, jig bite on the points 
going and, and I'm talking about even the secondary points going into creeks right now because the shad are already making a migration towards the back of the creeks right now so bass are going to either be ahead of them or be following them but they're going to try and trap them somewhere so square bill crankbaits shallow running crankbaits jigs from stand up jig right here and if you look on stand up jig they've got some great great plastics to use also but what you're trying to do is make them bite either a crawfish or a shad that's what they're after that's where I think you're going to have the biggest, biggest amount of fun. And let me give you a clue. If you go into a, a bay or, or, or a slough or a creek and you don't see any shad in there, no bait fish, get out of it. It's unproductive water. Get on and quit wasting your time. Go somewhere in a creek where you see the little flickering or uh, the little telltale signs of shad flickering on top. That's where you want to concentrate. And the more the merrier, because you know the more of them there is, the more bass is going to be in the area. So we hope that helps you out there, Isaiah. And good luck. Send us a picture when you get that one big one there and send it on in. A lot of, hey, I want to say, I, I've got a lot of neat kid pictures coming in now of kids going out there. They're doing the same thing what I'm telling them to do right now. It's going in the back of the creeks and stuff and using shallow running crankbaits. And I'm seeing some five, six, and seven pounders from these kids. Wow. And we're going to start showing them really, really quick. Some awesome kid pictures catching some really big bass. And a lot of their parents are going, I wish they were in a bass tournament. <laughs> <laughs> they could bring home the bacon. Kentucky Lake has got to be, when we had a show last week about Kentucky Lake, we love Kentucky Lake. It's awesome. I think one of the jewels around in of middle tennessee but from a duck hunting standpoint uh what i'm thinking the camden bottom big sandy area of of kentucky lake has got to be one of the most awesome parts of kentucky lake as far as duck hunting well you that's my backyard so you expect me to say yes oh yeah well and not only that but look at all the corn fields and soybean fields it's right there <laughs> right beside big sandy that's where a lot of the agricultural crops are is near Big Sandy. So it looks, that would stand the reason that there's a lot of, of ducks in the area. There, that's true, but there used to be more farmland in that area, oh, yeah. and now that's all went away. Now, you know, they're doing, they're making efforts to reprovide that food source. Do you think that, that um, <clears throat> we as individuals, like Ducks Unlimited is a voluntary organization, so is Delta Waterfowl. Voluntarily, guys and gals give their time and effort to promote habitat and promote duck hunting um do you think that more needs to be done as far as planting crops planting uh, you know i used to see a lot of wood duck boxes I, I just want to bring that up as a fisherman i saw wood duck boxes everywhere now i'm seeing fewer and fewer and I, and i know you know age and wind and mother nature takes away some of them but they're not being rebuilt and, and now TWRA is doing a pretty good job of putting uh, them up there. Right. I'd have to say that they are probably the only people now making the effort to provide wood duck boxes. And I believe, per, from a personal standpoint, they do a very good job. I do that. too. But, you know, Boy Scout troops used to build them all the time as a project, uh, you know, stuff like that. I'd like to see more and more of that, wouldn't you, to, to get more habitat for the duck. I think that you could concentrate them a little bit better if we could get more of them stay here well that's true but you i need mean to shoe off the geese <laughs> well <laughs> well you know wood duck in my opinion is one of the best eating ducks if you like to eat ducks wood duck and teal this weekend coming up that's the best now billy ducks. blakely says the same thing so i have you guys got to. well look at one. billy then look at me so you know we got you the wanna, same build you, you know yeah. three usually me same bill you want you want to find a good place to eat, follow a big man okay i heard we'll take you there hey we got to go now and do our tip of the week this week's tip of the week is being brought to you by interstate batteries of music city Located at 3729 Highway 109 North in Lebanon, Tennessee. Home of your alternative power source. 
All right, this week's tip of the week is one I got from Curtis Sloan out there at Sloan's Motorcycle and ATVs in, Motor in Murfreesboro. Great, great bunch of guys and gals that work out there. So if you got an ATV problem, go out there and visit them. It's Sloan's. Don't moan, don't groan. Go to Sloan's, and here's their tip. Uh, I talked to one of the service managers, and he said, Hugh, at any time that you're going to leave something, an ATV, a lawnmower, a tractor, whatever the case may be, if you're going to leave it sitting for more than three weeks, get you some stable ethanol treatment. And I said, why the three weeks? He said, that's how soon it takes for the ethanol to gel is three weeks. So from putting a fresh tank in till three weeks, that's how much time you have before it can, can congeal. So go ahead and put you, read the directions, I believe it's one ounce for every 10 gallons of fuel. You can put that ethanol treatment in there. Then you don't have to worry about it, especially if you want to go duck hunting and you've waited and waited and waited and now it's season and you jump on your ATV and it will not crank. Oh, man, that could be disturbing. So remember, ethanol, uh, stay bill, ethanol treatment in your tanks. All right. We're going to take another break. When we come back, boy, has Joy got a recipe just made for you and I. We'll be right back with more of Southern Woods and Water. This segment is being brought to you by Advanced Chiropractic where we help America feel great, one spine at a time. This week's recipe of the week is being brought to you by Broker Headquarters Group. Let our team in camo help you with all of your real estate needs. All right, well, the ladies in camo over there just went and did it again. They got something that's yummy. Uh, it's caramel, it's ooey gooey and all that kind of stuff. It's so gooey they had to spike it. So, uh, Joy? What'd you spike over there, honey? <laughs> what did we spike? Something Dr. Fisher would not want you to eat, Hugh. That's why you're doing it, not me. <laughs> hey, does that stay bill work on men? No. 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 That was fast. <laughs> my cousin, she's named after my mother, Marjorie Diane, and my mother was precious, and Marjorie Diane's precious. Thank I you, still Joy. call her Marjorie Diane. Thank you, Joy. That's Don's wife for how many years? Well, next. July, it will be 50. You're kidding me. No, You're not old enough to be married 50 years. Well, four children, nine grandchildren. Oh, my goodness. And you moved to Texas. Yes. We, and you uh, moved to St. Louis when? We moved to St. Louis when Chris was our oldest son. It has a hearing, a, a severe hearing impairment. And we moved there for him to attend school. Central Institute for the Deaf, really a world-renowned school for hearing impaired children. Do anything for your kids. You sure will. Don and I never discussed it because we knew that we wanted the very best for our son. It's awesome. I want to say that we all grew up around here. Our parents are from Greenbrier, uh, and we just we have 338 cousins on our mother's and dad's, her dad's side. So we're we're real close, and we're all coming in from everywhere to be together this weekend. That's right. Yeah. When the Lord said, "Go forth and multiply," in the Bible it says that the McMurtrys took him and his the word. Dorises and yeah. the Palmers yeah. and the right. your hearts and all of them up there. Okay, what we fixed was, and it's so simple. Roy's already been up here getting them off the tray. Well, they're hungry. <laughs> Rolos, just regular Rolos like this, and the little, cho or not chocolate, the caramel. What do we do? Unwrap the, like you do the uh, car caramel, caramel apples. Thank you, Hugh. And you dip them in the chocolate, melt you some chocolate and dip them. And then we rolled them in um, Heath Bar. We rolled them in little sprinkles. And some of them are just white chocolate. Some of them are semi-sweet chocolate. You can do anything you want. And you serve those. They're just awesome. And they're so easy. And the kids. They are. Oh, we had a good time making them for sure. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I know what I wanted to say real quick is, Marjorie Dan, I hate using our friends on TV, but sometimes I just have to do what a girl has to do. <laughs> you heard Hugh talk about deer season opening in Kentucky. Yes. September 1st. That's right. Where do you think we were? Dove season opened September 1st. Did we get to go? 
No. Please write him mean emails and. No, I'm gonna tell you what's. Fi I'm fixing to show you a prime example of a mutiny here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you about those honeydew lists she had for me for her uh, family reunion this Saturday. I wanted to go hunting. And and so I'm gonna show her what a mutiny really is. So, <laughs> but we thank you. You can see this recipe along with many many others on our website at southernwoodsandwaters.com. Go to it. Click on the recipe section. Also, kids, come on, kids. I need your kids out there doing the coloring contest going on. We have amphibious sunglasses. We're gonna be giving away uh, here very very shortly. I think we've got four more, four and a half more weeks left till we give away another pair of amphibia sunglasses so you better be going on there registering for those as we speak and by the way mark you were going to tell us about facebook if so you've got a facebook page right what's it called team file quest so team file quest filequest.com slash team file quest go on the facebook page on the facebook page you can like it and I tell you what I want to do for a short period of time. I want to offer anybody that has used some of my motion duck decoys. Right. If they have a testimony, I want them to go on to that Facebook page and tell the folks about what experience they have with these decoys. Right. Now, if they would do that, I want to contact them and I'm going to send them a Team FileQuest hat. And boy, they're nice hats. Well, thank you very much. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I am very appreciative of the people and my customers that use my decoys and that's first and foremost in my opinion because it gives me great pleasure in knowing that I provide a quality product for fellow hunters. Now let's go, uh, now the the website address is what? Foulquest.com. Foul quest.com and that's that's where you have all of the decoys and everything for sale right there on on the website yes so, uh so go to foulquest.com and check them out all the decoys and everything now don i want to talk to you buddy oh gee okay here don was over there while the recipe section was going on he was not listening to the girls talking about the recipe he wanted to talk about hunting and fishing said they did it all the time 24 7. Now, Don, you did as you were growing up. Yes. You hunted and fished all the time. I did. Then you got busy with life. Yeah, and my wife says the only reason our marriage has succeeded is because I left Nashville and I gave up hunting and fishing. <laughs> and so I've been a homebody ever since. You've been a workaholic I ever have, since, I haven't have, you? I have, I have, yes. Now it's time, the 50th, uh, uh, the 50th anniversary coming on. That's right. It's back to hunting and fishing again. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to try and change that. Let me tell you, I'm going to be a bad influence on his marriage. <laughs> I'm going to try and get him into hunting and fishing again. You, if you're too busy to hunt and fish, you're just too busy. You're just too busy. <laughs> That's right. And I tell you what, he's got a beautiful, you got beautiful lakes down there. I'm without, from Texas. I know it works yeah. down there, buddy. You bet. You can go down to Falcon or Amistad, you know, South Texas, and, yep. and get you a 13, 14 pounder real quick, like yep. down there. Yep. Uh, so Texas is just blessed to have a lot of great hunting and fishing opportunities there. Uh, now you live right outside of Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, Arlington, in Arlington. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of the that's the workaholic section that's of right. Dallas. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a lot of golf courses. You golf. Yeah, no, not I work all the time. You work you all the time. That, yeah. Yeah. 50th anniversary, we're cutting it off. I'm telling you, it's going to be hunting and fishing from then on. And I'll tell you what. But, Don, uh, uh, you come up here, uh, you and, your, and Diane come up here for the family reunion. Right. Um, we, we love to have you. Uh, you know, a lot of families do traditions, Mark, and his did too. I mean, Every Thanksgiving, I remember I heard stories where all of y'all would go rabbit hunting, or you know, it was right. every Thanksgiving morning, everybody would go rabbit hunting. Yeah. And f somehow along the lines, we've we've kind of dropped the ball on that. Traditions mm -hmm. uh, have faded away, and, and you know, my job that I feel like that I was put on this earth to do was to try and get tradition to come back a little bit. And, and, you know, we need to be, get more small game, waterfowl, stuff like that going again. So if you're ready to start one with me this year, that's what I'm going to do. Opening day of, uh, I'm at uh, 
Thanksgiving morning, I'm planning on hunting something. <laughs> <laughs> I might be hunting a chair to something on after that. Hey, we got a nice giveaway tonight. We've got, let me tell you what we got. We got about $25 worth of Sneed products. Wes and Billy Sneed up there in the beautiful state of Kentucky have made some great, great soft plastics. Sent them to me. Uh, I tell you what, they want to give them away. They want to share their secrets. Those boys win tournaments all the time. So be the fifth caller, 737-7767. We got a nice, nice package of soft plastics for you to catch that great big large mouth or small mouth on. Hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This calendar of the week is being brought to you by Drycon Carpet Cleaning. Give us a call or visit us online at drycon.com. All right, welcome back, everyone. We want to thank uh, and congratulate Nathan Bradley from Sparta, Tennessee. You've got some great Sneed products. Just come by WTVF here, uh, the station, and pick them up. And uh, But congratulations to Nathan Bradley. I also got to give a big shout out to Ben and Paulette McGee, and they from Elkton, Kentucky. Got to see them in Russellville, Kentucky at the Walmart, Wally World. Uh, Joy and I were in there picking up a few things, a few snacks, and uh, they watched the show religiously, which is great. And we just want to say a big hello to our friends up there in Elkton, Kentucky. All right, we've got uh, going on Saturday, September 8th, Wood Duck and Teal season open this Saturday morning. And uh, it is two wood ducks, or you can get four teal, but no more than four ducks, period. That is that is correct, yes. Yeah, no more than four ducks. So that opens Saturday morning. Also this Saturday, the BASS Weekend Series is going to be out at Old Hickory, out at Flippers. Then Sunday, September the 9th, Pine Creek Archery Club, that's our club, is going to have a string shoot up there in Hendersonville at Rockland Recreation Park. Also, you got the BASS Weekend Series will still be going on. That's a two-day event that's going to go on there. Uh, next week, uh, we have on Saturday, September 15th, is the 10th Annual Hayes Open Sit Go Tournament out at Hendricks Creek Resort on Dale Hollow Lake. That is $150 a boat. And so you want to be going out there. And that is a two day of event. And so go out there and check them out. Also, Music City Bass Angers, we're all headed to Gunnersville Lake that same weekend. So come check us out. We hope to have some great, great pictures for you uh, coming back from that. I got about 40 seconds left. I want to say, Mark, thank you so much. Mark and I are teamed up now to this. We've made an agreement. We're going to do some duck hunting. We're going to bring some duck hunts to you by video this year. We've never done it before, but we're going to do it starting this year. And Mark, thank you so much for helping us out on that. My pleasure, you. And Don, <laughs> I will see you not only today, tomorrow, and Saturday. That's then I'm right. going to be. I'll be gone from for a little while. But, <laughs> but we're going to get him hunting if it. Kills everybody. I, I'm sorry. Hey, wear those personal flotation devices. And if you're going to go up a tree stand, wear your safety belts up there also. We'll see you right here next week with more Southern Woods and Waters. Goodbye, everybody.